All right, everyone. This is a demo video for our newest module, the SV1 Dual uh, and Stereo VCA. This module is two identical channels, uh, which each has two VCAs, uh, and it can be used um, as two separate VCAs or a stereo VCA, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Each channel has two separate VCAs, so there's actually four in total. There's one labeled vintage, and that is a discrete transistor VCA with vintage op amps. And then there is another pair left and right labeled clean, which is a modern chip-based VCA with modern op amps. So right out uh, of the box here, we've got uh, two oscillators from the H1 module patched in uh, to uh, my stereo filter, which I'm just leaving the cutoff wide open here, and then into the SV1. So we have the uh, audio input level for each channel. Um, I have that at the center detent, which is unity gain, and then I'm gonna turn up the bias. And you can hear it's uh, fully panned to the left side. We have one oscillator, and to the right, we have another. And what we see on the screen and the data there is the uh, vintage and the clean vintage on top and the clean on the bottom of the uh, right channel. Okay, So what the bias does, since we're talking about that, is it simply, there's a CV control for each VCA and this is an offset for it. So it's zero to five volts that are added to whatever CV we have. So it essentially just serves to open up the VCA. Now, one thing to know is that if we are not, if we don't have any jacks into either of the left channels, then the right channel, as indicated by this little arrow here, passes that signal from the left into the right and they, it becomes a mixer basically. So, now you hear a mix of the two oscillator notes in the right channel. So it's acting as a mixer. If we select uh, either one of these left VCAs, then that disappears. So that's in the manual, it's uh, under output normaling. It talks about that, but hopefully that clears up what's happening there. So then we have this link button here. And just like SF1, when it's lit, then all these controls on the left side control the pair. So now I'm just using the one bias knob. Now we have a LFO going to the CV in, which is normaled as indicated by that little arrow to the right side. So we need not plug it in on the other one. Um, now you can see the, the signal is only responding to the positive portion of the LFO, which is a bipolar signal. So one of the uses of bias is to offset that. And now we've got the VCA responding to the upper and lower portions of that. So 
that's a use for bias as well. Now you see on the CV attenuator, it actually goes a detent in the center just like the audio input and that is 100% of whatever CV you're handing it and then past that goes up to 2x or 200% of it which effectively gives you an extra 6 dB of gain on the output stage of the VCAs. And yeah, well, so we'll let me uh, repatch this here with this little sequence that was going through earlier. Why is this not working? Oh, yes. Okay. This. Zooming in a little bit. Now, at this point, uh, I want to show the different uh, input drive uh, options that you have and, and see how that kind of works out. So, right now we just have a little sequence uh, playing, uh, and an envelope is triggering the VCA now. Um, but as I was saying, the input levels uh, go to Unity in the center detent and past it is another 6 dB of gain. And this is where you're going to see initially the difference between the vintage and the clean. This is vintage and this is clean. See, I start pushing it, the saturation and harmonic distortion that occurs. Additionally, there's an overdrive switch. And that adds 6 dB to the input of each VCA. Clip, output clip levels are connected to the clean VCA because the clean will always clip before the sat the vintage. The vintage may not be clipping when the clean is because it basically saturates and can take less signal than the clean. So the harder you push it, the larger the difference may be on the output between vintage and clean, if that makes sense. So let's listen to what that sounds like on the vintage. Pushed with overdrive plus 6 dB on the input. And you hear it was much harsher through the clean VCA. Sometimes that's what you want, right? Now, of course, you get both of these outputs at the same time. So you could mix them together or send one to some other process or whatever. Let's hear it with a sawtooth wave for kicks. So vintage pushed really hard. Clean pushed really hard. Excellent. Now, 
One final feature is a feature you do not see on a lot of VCAs, and that is a zero cross detect circuit. And that can be turned on and off. And what that does is it detects and only will allow the opening of the VCA via the control voltage when the source signal, the, the signal that's going into the audio in, um, crosses through zero. And that has the effect of getting rid of clicks, clicking artifacts that you will get when you have uh, very fast attacking envelopes. So to simulate that, let's go ahead and patch that LFO back in. What have I done? Oh, here we go. All right, we can take overdrive off now. And we will use the square wave instead of a triangle. Do you hear all that clicking? Now, let's make it go away. Like magic. Works especially well for bassy sounds. I shouldn't say it works any better, it's just more noticeable, right? Zero to detect off. So if you had like a kick drum patch or something and, and you wanted to, you were already um, resetting your VCA on each hit, but you would still have potentially uh, a lot of um, click from the VCA and this will completely get rid of it if you have a really fast envelope like a uh, bass patch or something. So yeah, there we are with it on off on the right side, off on the left side. It really, it works. Gosh darn it, it works. Good stuff. Did I forget any features? I don't know. I'll probably realize that when I go to edit this video, but I think I covered everything. So that is the SV1 dual stereo VCA, and it is 12 HP, and I think that about covers it. So I hope you guys found that video useful, and I hope you consider adding this to your rack and pairing it with perhaps an SF1 stereo filter. I think that's a good idea. I think you should do it. You should go buy one, buy two of everything. All right, I'm just kidding, but seriously, buy my stuff. You guys uh, have a good one, happy patching and all that. Cheers.